What's going on guys, Victor here, and I hope you're ready for today's video. You guys have seen us fillet so many fish at this fillet table, and every time we fillet fish, swarms of catfish come by. Tomorrow we're getting a nice cold front coming in, and I think it's the perfect weather to do a big fish fry, and what better fish to use for a fish fry than some fried up catfish. So what I got going on is, I have a bucket, I have a bucket full of ballyhoo defrosting. These are the ballyhoo we usually use as bait when we go offshore. And when we have leftovers, we like to freeze them for situations like this, or we take them out with a snapper fishing. I got the uh, trusty Dexter Tiger Edge over here, and I'm just cutting up our ballyhoo into little chunks because we want to get the catfish super fired up today. And my plan is to cast net the catfish. Now what we've noticed is a lot of times when you try to catch the catfish on rod and reel one by one, you might get one or two, three, and then they start to get spooked. They live in the canal, so I'm sure people catch them all the time, and they catch on quickly. We got an eight foot cast net over there, a really heavy one, and I'm gonna try to get them congregated into one little ball, and then cast net as many as I can. I'm trying to do it in one shot. So I put my bucket of ballyhoo, they were previously frozen, and so frozen bait will uh, float. We want it to sink. So I have all my ballyhoo sitting in a bucket of water here. Some of the ballyhoo pieces had like air sacs. I don't know if it's an air bladder or what. It keeps them buoyant. If you hold on, listen to this. It sounds yeah. it sounds like the things you get in packaging, doesn't it? Yeah. So look at all of them. That's so weird. That's what's in the ballyhoo because you always see ballyhoo up top. So I'm trying to get rid of all those now. I'm not going to throw all the chunks in here because this is where the mangrove snapper are, puffer fish. The catfish like to kind of stay out deep. So what we're going to do is, I got a nice big open area I could throw the net if I do it right here. So I'm going to just continue to throw chunks in this area right here. And I'm going to try to get the catfish all fired up and up top. And just keep throwing them in the exact same spot, that way the catfish know where to go. So Brooke thinks that they're going to be really fast, but I got, this is only an eight foot net, but it's really heavy. And another thing that's kind of on our side is it's not high tide. So there's less water for that. The, the net has to travel down and sink. Let's see if it sinks fast enough. Oh. Oh, I see him in there. I see one. Is there only one? No, Two. there's more than one. The one is so small. What do we get? We got two cats. Not as many as I thought we would get, but then again, we didn't see that many up top. So I think we're going to have to really get them chummed up to be able to get a lot. Okay, well, first throw yielded two catfish, and then we continue to throw in some ballyhoo chunks, but they kind of spooked, and I think to get them in the net, you really have to have a lot of them fired up on top. So Brooke had the good idea of uh, putting some chum out. So what we're gonna do is, this is the same chum bag we use on the boat when we go offshore. We just stopped over a big dog bait and tackle, picked up some chum, we're gonna throw it in the middle of the canal, let it sit there for like 15 minutes and try to get all the catfish to come to it. As we wait for all the catfish to come to the chum bag, I'm going to try to catch a few on hook and line. So we've never put a chum bag in the canal before. We've occasionally threw the chum bag in after a day of fishing when there was only a little bit left, but, but we've never put a whole chum bag in. I can see you have something on. It looks like you, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm very curious to see like what we catch today and if anything cool comes. Ooh, that's <laughs> a big one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, Vic. Get them in before the people realize the fish really Woohoo! There that's an eater. That's, that's a good one. That's like one po' boy in itself. Yeah. That might be the biggest catfish we've ever caught in this That's canal. a good one. not that small. That's not that small, Brooke. That's a good size one. 
very important to use a circle hook because these guys, I'm going to show you the spines and how catfish are venomous and how to hold them properly when he calms down. So one thing we're doing differently this time, anytime we've ever eaten catfish, we've never bled them since they are a fishier fish with a really big bloodline. And it's important to do it while they're still alive because you need to let the heart pump out the blood. You don't want it to just coag coagulate in the body. You want it, the heart, to pump out the blood for you. Oh, instantly! I just said if you toss it out, you'll catch a jack. Look at that. <gasps> no! Oh, come on! The hook just pulls. I said there's one jack out there. I bet you if you toss it out far, you'll catch him. As soon as it hit the water, he ate it. I got a good one. That is a good one. It's a fatty. All right. As long as you know how to properly hold them, like where you are allowed to hold them, then you're fine. They only have three spines. They have this one up top right here. They have one right there and another one on the side. So they got these three spines. That are venoms. Which, if that gets in you, not gonna be good. So, as long as you grab them correctly, he's like super slimy since you washed him off with water. So as long as you grab them correctly, and you get a good hold on him where he's not gonna slither out of your hands. This one can't get me because it's blocked by that finger. This one can't get me. And this one's not gonna come up into my hand because the spine's up there. So uh, if you guys don't know, that's my fiance, Brooke. I think she's pretty badass. And she has her own YouTube channel. If you guys, I haven't shouted her out in a while. If you guys don't know, Brooke Christ Outdoors, I'll have it linked below. A lot of catch, clean, and cooks, and I'm so proud of her. She hit 100,000 subscribers last year. She's absolutely killing it, so you guys have to check out her channel. There's not a lot of girls who will grab a live venomous catfish. So, good job, babe. Thank you. Proper way to bleed a catfish is to cut off its tail, so that's what we're going to do. Only thing is, is that it's very hard because they are super slimy. Okay, and you guys will see that all that blood is going to come out of there and this should preserve the quality and the taste of the meat since they are known to be a lot gamier than most fish. And you know, look, this is not cruel, this is not inhumane. If we're going to harvest something, we're not going to let it go to waste. We're going to take the proper precautions to make sure that we consume it responsibly and that includes bleeding it. Rick says she got the biggest one of the day so far. Oh my goodness! Look at that bad, bad That boy. is a full grown. That's the biggest one. Okay. I left it in, um, we have a rod holder on the piling here. And I always say in the backyard when we're fishing, that after you catch a couple fish, they catch on. It seems crazy to say, but they catch on to what's happening and they'll leave. And that's what happened and we weren't getting as many fish in the canal. The chum bag's still in there, but there's barely any catfish anymore. Even though when we started out there were like a hundred and they just catch on, they see what's going on and they leave. So I tossed out a ballyhoo, it's like the middle of the canal, left it in the rod holder and then I saw the tip of the rod going like this. I was like, oh, we got a fish on. Fillet time, one of my favorite parts of the video. And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer. These are hard head catfish that we find in Florida. These are saltwater cats. These are not the freshwater catfish and I'm not going to fillet it like you would see other YouTubers do or how a lot of catfish guys do where they're going to outline it and take the skin off. These catfish don't have a lot of meat so I'm going to show you guys the way that we do it that yields the best results. Okay so the first thing I do, catfish are not like any other fish in terms of their rib cage. Their rib cage goes down and out. It's not flush with the rest of its body, so you can't treat it like a normal fish. There is a lot of meat here, but we're gonna treat that as a separate fillet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is feel around for the soft part where it ends and go over the rib cage, which is right about here, okay? And we're gonna go down to this fin right here. Then we're gonna treat it like a normal fish in terms of take the tip of our knife and just go down the length of the fish down the spine, 
towards the tail. Okay, now we can go from the tail back up towards the head along the spine. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Their rib cage is like any other fish, so you can't go through it, you gotta go above it, and it's angled very awkwardly. So you kinda just feel with the tip of your knife and go along the contours of it. Okay, so this is what I mean. This is your normal fillet, and then you gotta go up with it, and separate it from that rib cage, Okay, there's one fillet. You guys can kind of see what I mean about that rib cage going down. There's no meat up here. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, there's your second fillet. You got your two fillets. It doesn't end there. The fun doesn't end there. There's a ton of belly meat over here that you can still obtain. Not so much over here because this is where the ribs are, but I just feel around to where it's soft and I outline all along where it's soft, all the way up through the throat right here. It's very intuitive once you're in there. Okay, there's the little belly section. Now this is your other fillet. So you got the two sides, you got the belly, and now you guys can take a look at the catfish. See how he's got a really awkward um, rib cage, and then you have all of the belly meat right here. And now we skin them, and the cool thing about catfish is that they don't have pin bones in their fillets when you take the fillets off. Okay, there's the skin, we don't want that. Shave a little bit of that off. If you guys ever wondered what a catfish fillet looks like, a saltwater cat, I'll tell you what, they are some of the firmest, very firm fillets, not mushy whatsoever, but I think this is where they get a bad rap. They do have a bad bloodline, a very thick bloodline. It'd probably be even worse if we had not bled it. The belly has kind of like a, a film on it that you can peel away, so we take that off. And then we can actually skin it from the inside out. These are kind of like little chicken nuggets. I'll be honest, we've never eaten the belly section. We've only ever eaten the fillets. But I'm sure they'll be good. And there you have it. That is the product of one catfish. You know what? Everyone says they don't have a lot of meat on them, but I beg to differ. You get quite a good yield if you take that belly off of the fish. So I'll see you guys in the backyard and we're gonna fry them up. Today's catch and cook is catfish po' boys, or at least my take on it. So the first thing we're gonna do is whip up our sauce, which is our remoulade style sauce. I have one clove of minced garlic in there. And for our base, we're gonna do a mixture of mayo as well as sour cream. Mayo, sour cream, that's gonna serve as the base and guess what we had sour cream that we should have used before we used the new one cajun seasoning which is basically a mixture of paprika garlic powder cayenne salt pepper onion powder all sorts of other stuff um, i'm not going to do it individually so i'm just using pre-made cajun seasoning and this stuff has a kick to it so i'm not going to do too much like a teaspoon Spicy brown mustard. What? That was a teaspoon. You sure? Yeah. Spicy brown. Maybe one day I'll learn. Spicy brown mustard. Is that what was that? Two teaspoons, Brooke? Yeah. Okay. Worcestershire sauce. I already know the comment keyboard warriors are getting trigger happy right now, saying you mispronounced it. Okay, horseradish. Worcestershire. I don't know. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Horseradish? Horseradish. I like a lot of horseradish. Okay. For some sweetness, we add some ketchup. Secret ingredient is a little bit of pickle juice. Ketchup? 
<laughs> yeah, seriously. What is he doing? Some beautiful fresh cut scallion as well. I would like to load it up. Okay, now we're gonna do, this is our first mix, our first trial run, and then we'll see how it tastes. Okay, we give it a taste. So good, try it, seriously. Does anyone ever comment on us sticking your fingers in? No, nobody has. Mmm. It's good, isn't it? That's so good. Seriously, so good. Brooke is someone who doesn't like A, spicy mustard or horseradish. Do you taste it, babe? No. It's like a slight hint of it. So someone who does like it will taste it, but someone who doesn't like it is not gonna be overwhelmed by it. But seriously, guys, that is so good. The only thing I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna add all the scallions because we're gonna spread it on our sandwich. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to make my homemade tartar sauce. This is a recipe that my family has used, my grandma taught me, my dad taught me, and I'm telling you, it's the best tartar sauce you'll ever have. So what you're gonna do is, or sorry, equal parts of mayo to sour cream, dill pickles, finely minced, not the sweet kind, okay? You can put that pickle juice in there as well. Very finely minced yellow onion, same thing, same proportion of pickle to onion, and probably the most important thing in this is black pepper and a lot of it. You seriously cannot put enough in there. You guys see how thick and chunky this is? That's exactly what you want. Those onions and pickles really flavor the tartar sauce. When you go to a restaurant, most tartar sauces I think have some type of vinegar component to it, which that ruins it for me. This is the tartar sauce I grew up on. Seriously guys, give this a try. Brick wasn't a big tartar sauce fan before she tried this one too. Here is the catfish, and what I've done is, nine o'clock this morning, it's 12 o'clock now, stainless steel bowl, put all of the fillets in there, and I have them soaking in buttermilk. Uh, and another thing I did, so I know you guys can't see it that well right now, but this bloodline of the catfish, when I was filleting it, you guys saw, the bloodline runs almost from side to side of the fillet. If there was any bloodline that looked really bad or just there was a lot of it. I took a, a, a fillet knife and I just shaved away the bloodline because I know that that is the only thing that's gonna ruin, that would ruin someone's taste when it comes to catfish. I know they're gonna be good, we've had them before, but the bloodline is the only part that you gotta worry about. Cornmeal, Cajun seasoning, and we're gonna season our cornmeal. That way we don't have to season our fish. About that much, and then salt, some pepper, we go straight from the buttermilk, let a little bit of it drip off, and into our cornmeal batter. And if you guys have never fried with cornmeal, cheap, flavorful, and a much, I like the texture a lot more than just um, pan frying and flour, deep frying and flour. It ends up really crispy and has a unique flavor. And if you're gluten free, it's good for those, good for that as well. Yesterday, Brooke and Victor were in my backyard with a cast net and a chum bag and throwing chum in. And they're telling me they're going to catch all these saltwater cats in my backyard and cook them up for us for lunch. And I said, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a good one. And you know, I have the inside scoop on, on how good Victor cooks. He, he could cook us minnows or iguanas or ballyhoos and it always tastes good. But for some reason, I don't know if anybody agrees with me but those salt water catfish just didn't look appetizing to me. So we're gonna see if, Victor's very confident with, with uh, what he's cooking today. So we're gonna see if he proves me wrong. I, I, I got my doubts, but I'm, I'm here to try it anyway. I think this is the best fish I've ever had and I'm not telling a lie, this is really true. It's delicious. Hey. Oh, I want a piece now. <laughs> now I want a piece. Not a bit fishy. No, not a bit fishy. Okay. All right. Now, now my mouth is watering. Let me see. It's good. It's not the best fish I ever ate. But it's good. But it's it's amazing that Victor can make those saltwater catfish appetizing. That's what I like to hear. And you know what's funny? His mom, mom last time said that Wahoo was the fav her, the best fish she's ever had. So to compare Wahoo to saltwater catfish, that's saying something. I'll take this one over that. <laughs> Wow. My dad right. said, no way. No way. <laughs> so here's what we got going on. This is like the third batch going in. Peanut oil, about 350 degrees in the outdoor burner. And we're going straight into the oil. And they fry for like five to six minutes. Not a complete deep fry, but 
a good amount of oil. Some big hoagies from a local Italian market. Very important to have nice soft bread. So for the bottom layer, we're gonna do tartar sauce, lettuce. Good hot piece of catfish. Some tomato. Onion. And then the homemade remoulade. A French uh, style sauce. Yeah, my mouth's watering now. Oh man, <laughs> I was hoping he was gonna hand that to me. I was like, man, I hope he's making that for me. Look, look how good that looked. Okay. My gosh, Victor was confident. You know, Brooke was calling me a baby that I had all this bad attitude in my head about these catfish. Victor was very confident that it was gonna taste good. And he's right. Look at that thing. With the onions and tomatoes and who knows what kind of sauce he, he whipped up to put in this thing. But this thing is delicious. I can't believe how wrong I was. I opted for half a sandwich, not a whole sandwich, but the softness of this bread, Victor was like, searched a couple places for a really, really good soft bread. And the softness of the bread with the crunch of the fish and all those sauces together, it all just goes together so, so well. It's so, so good. <laughs> it's really, really good. I love that crunchy texture of this fish. Yeah, me too. I used to only like doing breadcrumbs for fried fish, but this is really good. Well, I'm almost done with my sandwich. And um, I gotta say, Victor made it delicious. I, I haven't watched the video yet, so I didn't see all the preparation that went into making this fish turn into what it is. But I still have my doubts if just anybody could make that saltwater catfish taste this good. But Victor did. It, it's really good, Victor. Good job. Thank you. I agree. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to hear that, guys. I am super happy with the way that dinner came out and we had Brooke's family come over which is always a nice touch and I just want to show you guys the catfish. So even though we fried it, a lot of people say that cooking something like this is cheating if you fry it, but not at all. These catfish were so good and they have a really unique texture that is much more like chicken than it is fish. Super flavorful. If you take the time to take out the bloodline, it really is good. I'm not gonna say it's the best fish in the world, but like my mom said, it was her favorite fish and she's eaten a lot of fish dinners at our house before, a lot of fish dinners at Brooke and, or at Brian and Debbie's house, and it really was good. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you guys have never tried saltwater hardhead catfish, you're seriously missing out. If it's a slow day of fishing and that's all you can catch, go ahead, take them home, bleed them, Take the bloodline off, harvest them, and cook them up. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.